Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Real Real Podcast. I'm excited because, Julie, how many times have you been on? Is this like your fifth time? I was about to say five, so I yes, yeah. I think so. I think it's your fifth time. And we're in Dallas again. I think we always record mainly in Dallas. We re- No, I've recorded twice in Miami, I think. Once virtually. Twice in Miami? Maybe? We, I don't know. Okay, we recorded last... I don't know when the last time was that we recorded, but... With uh, Tochi and Bird. Right, for my birthday. Okay, so we're recording again, and I have a new podcast set up. So I'm doing video, I'm doing... I have, like, a better mic and, like, mixer, and... I don't know, it feels more legit. It feels more like a, a little podcast studio we have going on. She's going all out for you guys. Yes, yes. So... Today, I feel like you guys already know everything that you need to know about Julie for the most part. Like, I don't want, I don't need to like ask you about yourself or like no. talk to you about the coffee shop. Like we already have so much about that that you can go and watch online. So we're going to play a game for the podcast, which I'm really excited about. I love it. Let's and play. We have some wine, um, some white wine. Julie is a uh, like wine connoisseur. No, I'm just, <laughs> no, I'm not going to say it. No, you can say it. I'm just a snob when it comes to things. Yeah. You know, like, it's I a food. Like, I'm was, a foodie. I'm a foodie. How about that? Yeah. I was like, oh, this is such good wine. And Julie's like, yeah, I know. Like, what did you expect <laughs> yeah. from me? I was like, me? I only buy good wine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to play a game. It's called We're Not Really Strangers. I've actually never played this game before, but I really, I've always wanted to play. And it's the self-love one. You so, know what I was about to say? And then I like thought about it and I was like, I'm not going to say it. And now I'm like, I should say it. It's going to be funny. What? I was like, I'm just really picky about what goes in my mouth. <laughs> But then I realized that it could sound really bad. I mean, you. I mean, that's a good thing. That's a good, in any connotation. That's a good thing. <laughs> I think we should all be picky about that. Exactly. So, hey. <laughs> so, cheers to that. Anyways, um, we're gonna play. We're not really strangers. And how to play this? Honestly, I don't know the rules. I just know it's like a question game. Like I think it's it's every level you go get deeper and deeper. Okay. So level one, I think, is like the more shallow level and then level three is like we're getting really deep so we're both gonna play if we don't want to answer a question i guess we can like chug our wine or something (laughs) so we're gonna start with level one i guess i'll ask you the first question should we both answer it i don't know let's see whatever what have you grown to love about yourself physically or like personality wise (laughs) it could be anything i don't know honestly i feel like so many things and i think that's the thing i've learned to love loving myself is that weird is that cheesy no i love that i think that's so important i feel like the past year has like been so much growth and like self-love and like i love that like i love that i learned to accept myself and love myself and and trying to like be better in the ways that i believe that i can be better so like Mm -hmm. work on that yeah yeah no i like that i feel like i feel like we should answer we should get a different question. Okay. So, because then you're going to say the same thing or whatever, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, Not yeah. necessarily, but. So, we'll do a different question. Okay. Level one. Ooh. What is difficult to forgive yourself for? Oh, <laughs> I got the easy <laughs> one. These are shallow. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be intense. Okay. What is difficult to forgive myself for? I think for me, I've. I think it's okay. I don't know how like personal I want to get. <laughs> I know I read. I was uh, like, oh. um, I would say I really, I don't have that many regrets. Like I know that's cheesy. I don't have that many regrets, and I do think that if you're spending time beating yourself up over something, it's it's just such wasted energy. Because, I mean, from what I believe, I believe that like if you ask for forgiveness it's given to you and so if you're spending so much time beating yourself up over something that you did or like something that you regret it's not productive it's wasted energy and it's you're already forgiven so you have to like move past it so I would say technically like oh there's nothing I don't have any regrets but if I really think about it I feel like it's like people that I've let in that I like shouldn't have let in, Mm -hmm. I would say is, and I like, I beat myself up over it because I 
when like, dang, why did I like let that person in? You know, Mm -hmm. why did I like let them kind of like close to me? Maybe what you're trying to say is like, like you feel like maybe you didn't judge people right or something like that. Yeah. And just things that I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Like, I don't know. Like, it's like things that you know that you shouldn't have done, but you do it anyways. Mm -hmm. Like that's so. I knew you were yeah. when you walked in. <laughs> yeah, I think for me, that's like the biggest thing is regretting things that I know were wrong and I still did them and like still trying to forgive myself for those mm-hmm. things. Like I know I'm forgiven, but it still sometimes like creeps back in. That's you know? Like, yeah. I agree. So with being a little vague, okay, that was deep. Um, <laughs> Level two. Mm-mm. Let's do like five of each or something like that, or like three of each. Oh, so we're still on level one? Yeah. Let's okay. do like three of each. Oh, it's your turn, anyways. Okay. Okay, it says level one past. So maybe it's not level of, maybe it's not depth. It's like level one's about the past. Oh, I think so. Yeah, you're right. Maybe. Okay. What is one thing you did right? I think there's so many things you've done right. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to think. If I were to say like one thing that I still feel like I do right, like it's like something I I do right. I think I am very like, I'm very loyal. Like I think I love, people that I love, I like love. Mm-hmm. And I'm very loyal and like I'll always put those people first. Like I don't think I'm like a wishy-washy person or like someone that you can't count on. Like I just feel like everybody that I love knows that I will always be there. And you know, I just think I'm, I think I I, I love well. Is that weird? No, I think that's, I think you do too. I think it's like you're super, super loyal. I mean, I would definitely agree that you're super loyal. And especially with friends, like we, Julia and I have had so many moments this trip where we're like, like, you're my soulmate. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Like, Natalie's not my friend anymore. She's my sister. Yeah. And that's what I literally say to people. I know. And so I think for, like, She's been one of my longest friends. We've known each other for eight years now. And we've been super close. I mean, there's moments where we get like closer, not as close, closer, not as close. But now I feel like we've never been closer. And like, I feel like all those like not as close and close got us to be closer because we also, I don't know, every time you don't have something as much in your life, you get learn to appreciate it when you have it back and things like that. And, and I think it's also all those moments have defined us for a reason. And I do think we weren't as close for not for who we were, but for like external factors. Yeah. You know, like really bad boyfriends. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, no, I I definitely agree with you with that. I think that you're very, 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 very loyal. Thank you. Yeah. And like, that's so important in friendships. I know. And it's not just in friendships. I feel like with my family and even, I even feel like I'm very loyal with my employees. Like it's, mm-hmm. I, I try to act that way with everybody, mm-hmm. which is something I do. I do intentionally. So. Yeah. Yeah. And you're really good at it. Thank you. Oh, I feel like yours are deeper than mine. Oh. <laughs> when have you felt like you needed to be tough? When I needed to be tough? Yeah, like strong. Um, I think when I went through my breakup, because it's so much easier to get back together with a person, or it's so much easier to not do it, you know? Like it's Stay in your comfort zone. Yeah, to stay in your comfort zone. And like, be like, you know what? Things are fine, so I'm not going to do it. Like, even if you know that you're making the right decision, I think it's so hard to make the right decision. Yeah. And to, even if it's like, like for me, I've talked about my breakup before, but it was, nothing happened. Like, it wasn't, I'm tired of being treated this way or anything. Like, it was nothing like that. It was just something that I knew I needed, like we needed to do. Um. And there's so many moments when it's like, oh, should we get back together? Oh, or like, what or if? what if? Or did I make the right decision? Or it would just be easier to not have this conversation. And I think for both of us, I mean, obviously he's not here to answer the question, but I think we would both answer the same way with like, that is when we both had to be tough. Um, and that's like the biggest thing I can think of right now is like, that was the hardest <laughs> period of my life, I feel like. So... You just have to be strong because it is so much easier to like go back and just be like, never mind, let's. Yeah, but let's you gotta stay true it. to yourself. And I feel like it'll be worth it. You know, like it's yeah. kind of one of those moments where you're, it's so hard, but you're like, 
I know this is for, you know, like you just trust. Yeah. So I think that is probably when I've known I've had to be tough, even when it's really, really, really hard. Same. Yeah. I was thinking about you too. <laughs> Same. Oh. All right. Oh, wait. It's my turn. Oh, to yeah. Ask it's you your question. turn. Is this the third or second one? Third, third one. Okay. Let's do five of each. Mm hmm. When was the last time you impressed yourself? Ooh. <laughs> You're getting all like the night, like, I know. What you love about yourself. What's your best quality? <laughs> and then mine is like, tell me your darkest secret. I know. Maybe you should have like, like, um, well, like shuffle make, them. Yeah, shuffle them. I was going to say flush them. <laughs> but, um, what was the question again? When was the last time you impressed yourself? I think the deep bellum opening, maybe, like, um, I opened, you know, with no family here, a whole new shop, no, like very few close friends here, and and I opened a whole new shop, you know, and it was like it's been a whole thing where like I've had to market it and like get people in and like building it. I mean, I was pulling all nighters and painting the walls and building tables, and I am not a do you do you do it yourself person. Like that is not me, <laughs> not handy. So, I mean, I was so like happy. Uh, when I opened, I like was emotional and everything, you know. So I feel like, I feel like I was very impressed, pleasantly impressed with myself. Yeah, yeah. I know. And for context, Julie has two coffee shops now yes. in Dallas. Last time we but we she had, was on the podcast, she only had one. Mm -hmm. So she has two now in Deep Ellum and downtown. So go visit. Yes, please. Yeah. No, I'm like I would honestly say though for you, at least from like an outsider, from a friend that isn't the time I'm most impressed with you because it's like obvious that you were gonna do it. Like to me, I'm like, <laughs> it was like, a, it's a, obviously it's so impressive, but. You never I, had a doubt. Yeah. Yeah. I Thank never you. had a doubt about that. So to me, it's not like, oh wow, I can't believe Julie did that. It's like, oh yeah, duh. Like, casual, was, casual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To me, that was like yeah. casual. I think the most impressed I've been with you is when you move back home, quit your job, broke up with your, like did all of that, like literally turned your life around without knowing anything, like without knowing what was to come, literally like. Leap of faith. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Without even knowing it was a leap of faith, you yeah. know, which is like crazy. Yeah. That is when I'm like, whoa, like I, like that takes a lot of guts to do. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just like, I feel like that was a long time ago. So I feel yeah. like I was starting to, but yeah, I mean. I think after surviving that, like, that's not one of those moments that you're like, wow, I'm impressed with myself. You know, like, mm -hmm. it took, like, two years for me to be like, oh, my gosh. Like, I have been strong. Yeah. You know, so it's like, yeah. Yeah. But, all right. Me, my turn. Oh, yeah. Wild card. Okay, look at a photo of yourself as a child. What do you see? Uh -huh. Okay, I'll visualize a picture of me as a kid because my phone is recording <laughs> this, so I can't do that. Um, hmm, okay. I feel like when I was a little kid, I was so, one thing I always say about my childhood that I am so happy about is that my parents really did let me be whoever I wanted to be or like they, and I know me and you have talked about this before where they've really instilled that like I can do anything and not mm -hmm. in a cheesy like, you got this you can do anything like it wasn't said it wasn't like you can do anything I believe in you like those words weren't said but through their actions and like support support mm -hmm. it was shown which I think is so much better not to say that you shouldn't say those words I think it's important to say things too but it was always like I if I wanted to be an actress they put me in acting classes if I wanted to do and like I went to auditions if I wanted to do I want to be an author and like my school had like self-publishing and so I would always like self-publish books. I would go and I would like read the books that I wrote to my parents and I would make them sit down and like read in front of them, you know, and they would, they Listen, would do it even yeah. though it probably was awful, you know, or like <laughs> I would, I would do skits with my family and like put, put a show in front of them. And like, I think I was so curious as a kid and so like the I can do anything because they were just so supportive and they never were like, Ugh, I don't want to sit through this again. Or like, why are you doing this? Why are it? Well, you know, like they never did any of that. And so I always felt like I could do anything. And so I think when I see my younger self, I see that like little girl that's just like curious about the world and like 
And honestly, I feel like that's why where you are where you are today. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. And like I I didn't see, you know, like when you're a kid, you don't know all of like the hate that the world has, or I mean, I hope you don't you don't hear about like the hate that the world has or like the um I don't know, like the hardships that the world has. Like my parents protected me a lot from that. And so I didn't hear about like, oh, like you're a girl, so you can't do this, or you're oh, if you start a business, you're only going to have a 3% chance of making it. You know, that was never like... Wait, that's a thing? I think, like, it's like 7% of businesses make it. It's like something, like, ridiculously small. So, like, I never, like, heard any of that. I heard, like, yeah, go for it, you know? And so I think because of that, I was just always curious and always wanted to explore different things. And, like, I had such a good support system. And And I feel like also, like, your parents are really good at, like, it's like a not giving up mentality yeah like yeah you and fight through things you know yeah and so i just like look at my younger self and i'm like oh my gosh you're gonna just you expo- like be cu- continue to be curious and continue to like do whatever you want to do and explore different avenues like don't let anyone tell you that you can't and i think there was a time like in high school where people would make fun of me for certain things like my youtube channel or they would tell me like I remember when I started when I was telling people I was going into engineering. So many people were like, "Okay, you know that only thirty percent of people that go into engineering graduate with that degree." Like it's like, why do people feel the need to say that? That's I don't know. Question. And like I remember in my friend group, we had like half of us were going into engineering in my friend group, and one of my friends was like, "Oh, I guarantee that like seventy seventy percent of you guys like won't graduate in engineering," you know. And it's like even if that is true why i just like it was not used to people telling me that i can't do something yeah. and so i was like taken aback by it and i'm glad i didn't let it necessarily affect me but like i just would look at my younger self and i'm like keep that like curiosity keep that you know drive drive and i'm really glad i did like obviously it comes with like ups and downs but um I'm glad I did. And so I see my younger self and I'm like, you would be so happy and proud of where you are now. And that makes me really happy. I agree. And I think, I mean, it's, I literally feel like that shaped you. Yeah. No, it did. It totally did. For your the rest of your life because now you have, you know, your businesses and everything. It's like. It did. So, yeah, I think that's what I would tell my younger self or that's what I like see when I see my younger self. Little Natalie. Little me. <laughs> okay. Is this the fourth one? After it's my, it, I'm asking you the fifth one, I think. No, okay. you started. So is this your fifth one? We'll count. So that's the fourth one. Okay. How have you kept yourself safe? That's an interesting one. Oh, I feel like that one's easy. Jesus. Yeah. Literally, like, honestly, like, I feel like by prayer. Um, I think another way also, like, it's like, I think I am very, um, like, exclusive about who I actually let in my life like completely and that makes me feel safe because I feel like the people that are in my life the people that I share my life with are people that that I've chosen for a reason Mm -hmm. and I think I'm still learning like I still have my disappointments I've had in fallouts with girls I thought were gonna be my friends forever but I think that is making me feel even stronger and safer because I've now allowed that to live my life to so that I can I don't know. I just feel like, yeah, I don't know if I'm making any sense, but like being very, very picky about who surrounds me and who I'm with. And then I think another way is like, I think my home makes me feel really safe. Like I've made sure my home is a place I always want to be in and a place that I never feel icky and ever, you know, like even if that means cleaning when I don't want to clean or even if that means, you know, like praying when I'm too tired and I wanted to go to bed and even if that means not letting people in sometimes and like telling some people not bringing everybody to my home, mm-hmm. you know? So I think, yeah. How about you? I'm curious. What makes me feel safe? I actually don't know. I mean, one, yes, Jesus also. Like, definitely. I've learned this year especially to like rely on prayer so much more, mm-hmm. to just trust in God, to know that his plan is like better than my own. So 100% that. Um Besides that, I think I've learned, I mean, this year, I feel like not only have I started, like, 
diving deeper into my faith and just like trusting God more and getting closer to him. But also I've gotten closer to my family. I've gotten, I've made my best friends or like deepened those friendships. And so I think before um, when I was in a relationship, when, if I ever needed to vent or if I ever had a problem, like I would go to one person and one person only. And it was my boyfriend. And I feel like now I have not only do I, one, like rely on prayer so much more and God so much more, but I have such a solid group of friends that like I just know you guys are going to be my life forever. And I know like I can trust you like full heartedly. And it's not every friend I've made this past year. You know, there's obviously some friends I'm closer with than others. Obviously. But there are like the some of the friendships I've made this year. I'm like. What, like you guys are my people and like nice. I just I've never had that because I've always been either in a relationship where it's only been one person that I'm telling everything to and now that I'm not in that in a relationship period it's like oh I can like trust other people become closer with other people and it's really nice and it's I mean like why have only one soldier when you can have a lot of them yeah like, exactly <laughs> Exactly. defending you <laughs> exactly is it wait it's your turn now to ask me a question no that was oh no, yeah it is I asked you. yeah it is. <laughs> we're gonna get the rules right eventually <laughs> this is funny you keep on getting the younger self ones okay what would your younger self be relieved about mm. that's a hard one about. i actually don't know <sighs> um i think my younger self would one be relieved that I still have like strong faith? I think when I was younger, I remember reading journal entries from when I was like 15. And I was like, I hope that you're still like a Christian. I'm like, yeah, like I like would like Aww. think about that, which I don't know why, but I would literally like. Because you care about it so much. Yeah. So like, I think I'd be proud about that. Um, I'd be proud about my relationship with my family. I think it's gotten closer. Mm-hmm. And. And be proud of the friends I have. What is it, the question? What would it be? Relieved? Okay, relieved. <laughs> um, I would be relieved. You're like, I'd be proud of the one. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would be relieved that I, I mean, this might be shallow, like, don't have a corporate job and I'm working for myself. Ugh. I'd be like, oh, thank God. <laughs> no, same. <laughs> thank <clears throat> God. Yeah, I think that's what I would be relieved about. <laughs> same. Honestly, that's a good one. <laughs> Okay, so this is my last one to you. Okay. For level one. What came easily to you as a child? Oh, my God. I feel like I can answer this for you. No, hold on. Let me let me think. <laughs> let me think. Let me think. for Hold on. I don't know. You're going to have to tell me. I would say, like, instruments, music, like, yeah. just, like, talents like that. I like, was going to say sports. Yes, yeah, sports. Like, I feel like I was always outdoorsy and, like adventure mm-hmm. adventure like i was like, gonna say that did that. not come easily to me <laughs> but uh, yeah also music i think i think that what came easy to me was like exploring like i was an explorer i always wanted more and like le- learning more and i'm doing even now if i would like for example if, if i went on a trampoline like and jumped high then the next time i wanted to jump higher and do a backflip and then a front flip like i always wanted to like learn about myself and that came easy like i was i didn't feel scared yeah I, where I'm like the opposite. Everything I did was like scary. Like anything that I could that could cause bodily harm was scary for me because that my mom put that in me. Yeah. <laughs> I think my dad was just like, do it. Yeah. You know, like my dad. I mean, I think I was like five, and my dad put me in a horse by myself. You know, like yeah, I was never like. I don't know. My dad would just like let me fall. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then help whereas me like if I fell, my mom was like, oh, are you okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Okay, it's my turn. I'm going to do random ones because I feel like you get the same question. Now we're going on level two. We were already though, right? No. That was yeah, level the one last one. one. I gave you a level one. So then I need to give you a level one again. Oh. Okay, there's one more level one? Yeah. Okay. Or should I just ask you? Just ask, yeah, let's just go to level two. <laughs> How do you set boundaries, Natalie? How do I set boundaries? Okay, this is a therapy session, and I'm I like it. Me too. I feel like we've had this the entire week. I know this has been one week long therapy session. <laughs> um, okay, how do I set boundaries? 
I think I've actually been really bad at that in the past. Really? I, I you're good at it. I forgive people super easily, which mm-hmm. I think is a good thing. I think it's better to forgive. But I think you are able, you're allowed to forgive someone, but not allow them back into your life. And I'm not good at I will forgive someone and then have them will like come forget, right back forgive and forget. Like yes. you literally forget that anything happened. Like I've had friends that have done really bad things to me and like mean things to me. And I'm just like, okay, I, I like I don't hold grudges, so I'll forgive them and then I'll let them right back into my life. And then I'm kind of like disappointed when they hurt me again. And I'm like, well. I probably shouldn't have let them back into my life, you know? Like, I think it's good that I forgive them, but, like, I don't need them back in my life. So how do you set boundaries, though? I think I've been better at setting boundaries where I will forgive easily. Like, I, there's no one that I hate. There's no one that I hold a grudge about. Like, I understand that everyone makes mistakes, and I'm, I think I'm good at that. Um... But I think I've learned recently that not everyone needs to be in my life the same capacity that they've always been. Like, if we were once best friends, that does not mean we need to be best friends forever. Like, if you have done something that's been... Shitty, you know, like... Yeah, shitty, then I don't need you to be back in my life. Exactly. It's like, if we were best friends and everything is just getting better, then yeah, let's keep on being best friends. But if you were best friends and, like, you did something that bothered me, that doesn't mean that because it's your best friend, you have to forgive them and like yes. keep on being the same. Yeah. So I think I've gotten better at that, um, at setting those boundaries. And like, I know, I, I don't know. I think it's more just like knowing, oh, okay, that like, you don't need to, I, I don't need to have everyone be back in my life in the same capacity that they once were. Like, I think you're really good at that, actually. I think. I'm worse at that. Really? Because I feel like I'm like, I'm really, I'm good at setting boundaries in the sense of like, I feel like I just, I'm vocal. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm just like, I don't know, like, for example, like, this is like a weird one, but my cousin likes to hang out late at night because he's a night owl and I'm not. I wake up really early. So I'm like, my bedtime's at eight, not nine. Yeah. So like, he knows, you know, and like, whenever we hang out, it's like, he knows. So that's a boundary. But for me, I think with people though, like you're saying what you're really good at, like, I think I just like if you hurt me like that's it mm-hmm. we're not going back you know like which is like really extreme I wish I could have like you know, like a middle ground like you like you let them back in but you know to what extent yeah I think I'm yeah I definitely will let people back in but like maybe we're not as close as we once were exactly and that's fine I feel like I'm like a cut them off and that's <laughs> it yeah I just hate I'm I don't like being mad at people like I it takes more out of me to hate you or to be angry with you than to for you like usually when you have like anger towards someone or you're holding a grudge towards someone people might think like oh that's hurting the other person it it hurts me so much more than it hurts Mm. them and so it's like I would rather release that and be like I forgive you okay like that's People make mistakes, let's move on. But I think I couldn't be, I used to be bad at letting them back in because it's just easier. Kind of like what makes you tough, you know? I was like the breakup because it's like, yeah, that would have been easier to have been like, even though there was nothing to like forgive or be angry about, but like it would have been easier to go back to to normal. normal. And I need to realize that that's not like, like even after my breakup, I was like, you know, still wanting to talk sometimes or still wanting, you know, and it's like, I'm so bad at like changing relationships. And so I've gotten better at that. But now I'm like, okay, I've gotten the forgiveness part down. I need to work on like changing the relationship part. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, I think obviously we live for relationships, I think, in life. Like that's what most of life is about. It's relationships. Like Mm -hmm. for me, I think, I mean, I literally ask my mom sometimes. I'm like, mom, do you think that I'm doing something wrong? Because if I get hurt like that, like seriously, like I just like literally, not always, obviously it depends on the, but I think sometimes I'm like, why can I keep people in my life? And it's because I choose to yeah, walk away. Yep. And I'm also very like stubborn, so. Yeah. When was the time you saw yourself in someone else? My mom all the time, literally like <laughs> two weeks ago. Uh, and my dad, I think with my dad, I see my like entrepreneur like side and my, I think my dad is just like a very strong person and I think I am too. So he's inspired me to just like 
always keep going like literally no matter no matter how hard life gets like my dad's just always there yeah and then with my mom i think my mom is just such a like um a carer you know and a loving person and and i think every day i look more like her in that sense like so yeah i was my parents i think i see a lot of myself in yeah mm. i i could see you in both your parents too <laughs> I can. my turn Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what does your body need from you? What does my body need from me? Okay, I mean, healthy eating, working out. Like, I don't know. How else do you answer that question? What's your body asking of you right now? <laughs> mm, okay, well, I have talked about this, I feel like, on like TikTok more. But I've gained weight recently. And it's not a negative thing. Um and i'm someone that like for context i have been very skinny my whole life like and that's not i know people are rolling their eyes listening to this like oh my god poor you i'm not trying to say that but i've always been very small and i feel like i've always been insecure about my body in some capacity whether i'm too small i don't have boobs i don't have a butt i don't have curves i'm like so like childish looking you know and especially like in middle school i remember the first time i had a bra i like didn't tell my mom I like went and got one with a friend because I like was embarrassed to tell my mom that I wanted a bra. Granted, I did not need one. I was literally like flat as a board, but I just like wanted one because I would change in the locker room in middle school and like some girls would have boobs and they were wearing bras and you could see like the guy, so the guys that the girls liked had boobs. And so like I was like process of elimination of like what guys like. It's like, okay, it's that. And so I was always super insecure about my body, even though I was like very small. And so you probably didn't want to tell your mom because you knew your mom was going to be like, you don't need one. Yeah. <laughs> she opened my drawer one time and was like, what is this? I was oh. like. <gasps> <laughs> and then she took me to Target and we bought bras together. Oh. But I don't know why I was always so embarrassed about that. So I feel like I've always had some insecurity with that in some way. And so when I was in college, I started working out more. I started going to the gym and started like, you know, just like I feel like getting more muscular and more toned and all of that. Um, and now I'm going through this phase where I'm like gaining weight and my clothes are too small on me and my like pants don't fit me anymore. And I just like see someone bigger in the mirror, even though it's not a negative thing. Like I like my body now. I have more of a butt and I have, you know, like more curves and I'm, I'm happy about that. But I think it's just like change mm -hmm. and you see that like things aren't buttoning the way they used to or like I remember like that one time I was in Miami <laughs> I was gonna say a shirt literally broke <laughs> no we were like fighting that shirt like no, we were gonna make like, it fit I was like Julie this fit me a year ago like squeeze it on <laughs> I know yeah zipper broke um did not fit <laughs> so you know like things like I think just like dealing with that change um even though it's like it's like a it's like an angel and devil on in my head where it's like you look so good. Like you have curves now. This is what you've wanted. Like you, you're working out and like your, your, you know, body's changing in a good way. And then like the negative side, it's like, oh yeah, but you've gained weight and none of your clothes fit you. And look, you're bigger now. And look at how you used to look in the past. You know. So I think what my body needs from me is just like acceptance. I think of like, I, it's not a negative thing. It's not a great thing. It's just like a thing. And I should be, like, happy or, like, just, like, content about it, I guess. I think uh, we all struggle with that, though. Yeah. So that was kind of a deeper look, answer for a very... You look great. Question. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I love how I'm literally, like, your biggest fan. And we have proof of, proof of it. <laughs> In that video where I'm like, sexy! <laughs> a live photo. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Where does the tension live in your body? Tension? Body? Yeah. Like, in what sense? I guess like like my personal like what I don't like about myself or like no I think like when I get like stressed when you're stressed like where do you keep it I feel like my stomach I feel like all my like emotions like I don't know if you remember but in college I was always sick mm, like I in my stomach that. I like would throw up a lot and like it just always felt like I had a stomach ache and then um when I was you know with my ex boyfriend I feel like it was the same thing like I always had a stomach ache literally always interesting mm -hmm. so I feel like I. Or, like, when I'm stressed, I'm, like, I'm nauseous. You know, like, I'm just, like, immediately my stomach. Yeah. I don't even 
even know where mine is. Maybe my stomach. I have no idea because I get I like won't eat if I'm anxious. I know like, I definitely get, like, your stomach. Then I get so like stressed and like I won't eat and I'm like get so shaky and yeah I yeah know. interesting. All right, my turn. How do you calm your fears? <sighs> Prayer. Yeah. Literally, that's it. Like I just pray and I'll ask people to pray for me, mm-hmm. and then it like gives me a sense of peace. Like that's literally, and I try not to think about it. I'm not that anxious of a person in general. Um, so I'll just like pray about it. And I'm like, okay, I just tell myself like, what is worrying going to do? Nothing. So nope. I just try to tell myself that and then forget about it. And I'll like distract myself. Yep. So yeah. Literally the only thing. That's literally all I do. <laughs> no big trick. Okay. What's an outfit you feel great in? I think like my free people pants, okay. like my baggy pants that I always yeah. wear. I think I could those have them cute. in every color, like those pants with like baggy pants with sneakers and a cropped up. Mm-hmm. It's like, I think what I feel the most comfortable with. Mm-hmm. What about you? I think, I think I like tight clothes. Definitely. Something tight um, is what I feel good in. It doesn't always have to be cropped because sometimes I don't want it to be cropped. Maybe like a little cropped, but like in general, tight and usually like a jean. Like a I little. Feel like you love jeans. I do love jeans and like a crop top. Yeah. I, I f- love jeans and a crop top and like basics. Mm-hmm. That's one outfit. And then another one would be like a little mini skirt and like a tank top and sneakers. And that's like what I would feel the best in. Yeah. Maybe like a leather jacket. Definitely a leather jacket. I feel like you always wear a leather jacket. Mm -hmm. I feel like for me, it's like that or like flowy long dresses. Yeah. Those are like my... Ours are like the opposite. It's weird though because (laughs) we dress very similar all the time. I know. It's like the opposite of like what we feel best in. I know. (laughs) That's so funny. Oh yeah, my turn. Okay. How do you measure your own success? Yours are like harder than mine. Yeah. Um, Okay. How do I measure my own success? Um, for me, what I need to work on is that there's an ever present moving benchmark. I don't know if I'll ever feel successful. Like once I've reached one thing, I'm just looking to the next entrepreneurship 101. Yeah. Like it's like, I remember even when I was younger, like with YouTube, for example, I was like, all I need to hit is a hundred thousand subscribers. That's it. That's it. I was like, if I hit a hundred thousand, I'll be happy. I'm now at 300,000 and I'm not happy. You know, like it's like. How much is enough? How much is enough? Yeah. And for now, I'm like, oh, well, if only I can get my views back to like this many views on average. And it's like, I just know when I had that many views on average, I was always looking to the next thing. Same with money. I like I, w- I was always like, if I if I make if I make one hundred thousand dollars a year, I'll be happy. And now I'm making more than that. And it's like, I'm not <laughs> like I'm like, dang, like, why didn't I make more than the previous year? Mm-mm. You know, like it's like I I'm never content with my success. So I don't know what I do to measure it. I yeah. It's probably a work in progress because like, I don't know, started a company. I raised a million dollars. I was like, if, if I can just raise a million dollars, that's it. And now I'm like, well, we don't have X, Y, Z. You know, it's like, I've never been satisfied. I'm always grateful. And I'm always like, wow, like I can acknowledge my accomplishments. I can acknowledge that like I've, I've been successful and I've done good things, but I don't think I'll ever be like satisfied and be like, okay, I'm good. I'm chilling now. I don't think that's possible with our mindset. Yeah. Like, I don't think it'll ever be that way. And I don't know if that's a bad thing. Cause like, I know that what I've done is cool and like, I'm so proud of myself and I'm grateful, but like, I'm never going to be satisfied with stopping. I don't think I am either. And I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. I don't think it's a bad thing. Yeah. Maybe eventually, but like, I don't think so. I don't think so either. Who allows you to be you? I feel like, I mean, my family and my closest friends. I, I mean, I, I feel like that's so easy. Do I have to say someone specifically? No. No, my family and my closest friends, I feel like. Okay. Like anybody that I am I can be like more than a day with and I don't think I'm like trying. I'm yeah. like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Love one more. Oh, love oh yeah, because you started. Okay. So it's one more. Actually, no, I started this one. Level three. Okay. 
Level three is future. So we went past, present, future. It's not like deepest or least deep. deep. One day I will blank. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> One day I will... Um, I mean, I hope one day I'll have like a family and kids. Mm -hmm. I'll be a mom. Yeah, one day I'll be a mom and a wife and have a family and kids. And like, I think a lot of it's weird because for me, I don't dream about my wedding. I don't dream about being engaged. I really don't care about I don't even dream of like having a boyfriend. It's like I can't wait to like have a family one day and I like have kids and I don't need like I've always said this like I honestly don't even want a wedding I want to like elope and then have a party like I don't no like, you're not allowed I don't care about all of that stuff um but I do think about when I have kids because I think for me I like think about my parents and I literally can't imagine them at our age I can't imagine them as teenagers I can't imagine them in their 20s like I'm like you've been like 40 and up your whole life like I just like can't imagine them younger and so I've been like journaling and being so like I have my vid life online, you know, and like I can't wait until I have kids one day and they can see their mom at like their age when they were younger. Starting at 15, they'll be able to see what their mom was like. So that'll be cool. I'm like very excited to one day have that. Mine will kind of in your YouTube channel. I know they will. They'll <laughs> start know. seeing you in college. They'll That's start funny. seeing. That's so funny. Okay. What are you trying to unlearn about love? Unlearn? Unlearn. Do you need to unlearn anything? I feel like everything I know has made me, you know, stronger in what I do believe in. But if I could unlearn something, I think I would unlearn. I th I wish that I felt... <sighs> okay, hold on. Let me think how I want to say this. I feel like I always have, like, a really big wall towards men like I feel like they'll always put themselves first or like they're selfish or um I always tend to say something like I don't know like oh yeah but like men betray you so I mm -hmm. wish I could unlearn that just because I feel like not all of them yeah but from my past experiences so I wish I could unlearn that and I wish I could see them like unbiasedly yeah from now on yeah you know so yeah what about you mm, I think what I would unlearn trying to unlearn now is that I think I place a lot of emphasis we're getting a little deep here or a little stuff I don't talk about normally but I think I place a lot of emphasis on physical stuff like if you aren't doing I don't know if you're not like super touchy or if you're not whatever like you don't want me then that means you don't like me or that means you don't love me you know and I think I like put so much emphasis on that and I don't think that physicalness means love it definitely can yeah but like i don't think that's exactly what it means mm -hmm. and so i think in my previous relationships that has always been the focal point so trying to like realize that that's learning that ways. doesn't equate love yeah you know and that's why like even after my breakup if i've ever kissed anyone you know i'm like oh, they like me. And it's like, no, that's not what that means. <laughs> you know, so. No, 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 not today. Not, not always what that means. So I think that's what I would unlearn. Okay. <laughs> What's one thing about yourself you don't want to forget? Hmm. It's a hard one. I know. I think I don't want to forget all of like the amazing people in my life ever. Like it always scares me. It's going to get kind of like morbid. But it always scares me if I get, like, Alzheimer's or dementia or something that I'm going to, like, forget people. But, yeah, I think that I would – I it I never want to forget, like, the important people and, like, the love that I have from these important Your people. Your feelings for them. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay. This is fun, but, like, I wouldn't play with just anybody. Oh, no. This I is know. not a game to, like, pull out at a party. I know, right? It's like, <laughs> want to get deep with me tonight? Yeah. You know who plays this on, like, their first dates? Just take a guess. Do Give me know? a hint. One of my friends. Gigi? Yep. <laughs> Gigi, if you're listening, we love you. Love you, Gigi. <laughs> yeah, no, she plays. I got her this game. It's not exactly, we're not really strangers, but it's similar. It's like a card game that makes you get deep. Um... And I got it for her for Christmas, and she plays it on her first dates. That's intense. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's intense, Gigi. Good yeah. for you, girly. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> okay, this is the question. I think we have two more. What are you freeing yourself from? Dependencies. I think I, I'm freeing myself from like feeling dependent or like feeling like I need something to anything. You know, like I think that's something besides Jesus. You know, like like I think I don't ever want to have like a codependency where like I feel like I can't live without that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. I like that. Mm-hmm. That's a good thing. All right. Um. How else would you like to spend your days? Mm. In Costa Rica. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I've been trying to have more of a work-life balance where I feel like sometimes I either am all work, no, ba- no life, or all life, no work. And I feel like I need to do better at like balancing the two mm-hmm. in a day-to-day. Um. So I don't know. I would like to spend most of my days, for being cheesy, I'd like to spend most of my days happy, stress-free, getting rid of anxiety, not overthinking things. That would be nice. Yeah, taking care of your body. Yeah. Uh, my perfect my perfect day would be getting up in the morning, maybe doing a quick little workout, like low impact, nothing too hard, not too sweaty, you know, just like a little workout, maybe a little walk. Having a coffee in the morning with friends, being outside, maybe going to the beach, not working, like just chilling and like reading a book maybe. And then at night going to a nice dinner, maybe having a bottle of wine with friends. That sounds like a great day. Right? Let's do it. Let's do it. That's that's my perfect day. I was going to say for my birthday, but that's a lie because we're going to be... We'll be. We'll be good. <laughs> It's our battle in Miami. We won't yeah. be. We it. won't be reading a book by the beach. <laughs> yeah, uh, but um, another time. Another time. <laughs> Next time. Okay. What would you? What would help you forgive more? Oh, I don't know. Hold on. I think that maybe I'm really hard on people because I'm really hard on myself. So maybe like lowering my expectations would yeah. help me forgive more. Yeah. Like less expecting less, just letting myself be surprised in a good way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So now I think we each have one more question. Okay. The last one. I feel like you go a lot more into detail than I do. Yeah. You're better <laughs> than me at that. What's one thing you've been meaning to do? <laughs> hmm. Honestly, I don't know. Go to um, Costa Rica. Go to Costa Rica. <laughs> yes, I will book my flight eventually soon. <laughs> We're going in February. Um, one thing I've been meaning to do, I mean, yeah, travel more. It's definitely one thing. There's a lot of stuff on my to-do list that I need to get done. Um, but I don't know. Fall in love. Fall in love. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I think I'm actually really good at like doing what I want in the moment. So I don't have something that I'm like, oh my God, I've been wanting to do this for years. Like if I want to do something, I usually make a plan to get it done. So yeah, I don't know. That was a good last question. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Me and we're done. Okay, last one for Julie. Are your eyes having trouble focusing? Yeah. No. She doesn't <laughs> want to talk. No. I feel like in the dark, I'm like. I think it might be the reflection. Maybe. Okay. What do you need more time for? Myself. Like, I feel like, well, you were talking about the work-life balance, and I feel like I literally work every day. Mm. I think I've worked every day for the past, like, I don't even know. I think I need more time to just, like, for myself, like, completely. Like, just waking up at one day and li- literally have nothing to do just besides whatever comes to mind in that moment. Like, if I want to sleep till 12, sleep till 12. Yeah. If I want to go get ice cream, go get ice cream. I think that's what I need. Like, yeah. Okay. I like that. Mm-hmm. All right. Yay. Thank you so much, guys, for listening to this therapy session with me and Julie. Yeah, seriously. Um, this was so much fun. And I like this game a lot. We should play it more often. I know we should. It's a good way. Honestly, like, I'm going to have another glass. I'm gonna, we're going to have bolognese. Yeah, we're going to have some pasta. I'm super yeah. excited. So I hope that you guys liked this video slash podcast. If you guys are listening or watching. 
Be sure to share it with your friends, share it on Instagram, play this game with your friends. Um, I want to do another episode like this with other friends. There's so many cards left. And honestly, I would love to hear what other people say about these questions. I know. It's 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 interesting, you know, like you really have to dig in. Yeah. If you're watching on YouTube, answer them in the comments. Yeah. We'll read that them. That would be really fun. Okay. Thank you, guys. Where can they find you, Julie? And where can they visit your coffee shop, all this stuff? All right. So we have a coffee shop downtown Dallas and downtown Deep Ellum. So not downtown. Downtown Dallas and Deep Ellum. <laughs> and then my Instagram is Juliana Bernini S. And then I am on TikTok and I do post a lot about my life there. So if you're curious, you know, yeah, follow me. It is perfect. I think it's just Juliana Bernini actually there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Bye. guys.